world, hello Ghana, hello to all the amazing kids watching us right now. I welcome you all to the most interesting, educative and super exciting show, Kids Arena. Kids Arena shows you everything from a child's perspective, from robotics, technology, science, education, the list is endless. And for the next one hour, we'll be spearheading the entire show and bringing you the best right here on the Kids Arena. My name is Samara Oksite Asari. I am Anelam Timonkagwa. And I am Aurelia Kwate. Today's episode promises to be exciting, but most importantly, educative. We will be talking about various hindrances of education in Ghana. We also have on our plates the T and E segment, the DIY segment, the Kiss Trend and more. I guess you don't want to miss out on that. We start off with a quote of the day. If you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours by Dolly Parton. So, can I see your smiles? And on that note, we take our seats as we go for a short commercial break. Remember to keep being nice to each other. We will be right back. Keep smiling. Welcome back. Hi kiddos. Let's learn how to write the letter A. Slant down. Slant down. Across. A is for alligator. Alligator. Welcome back from that break. This is still the kids' arena. Yes, this is still the Kids Arena and today we are going to be discussing about some challenges hindering academic performances in our schools. And an example of such a school is the Senafu Kofa Basic School, which is on the island of the Kwewuno District in the eastern region of Ghana. Let's take a look at this video. As the teacher deficits in rural areas continue to widen, there are fears. In the Afran Plain North District of the Eastern Region, for example, the issue of poor infrastructure is sterling. Because there's no light, there's no solar and other things, most of the children come there and they are getting snake bites. And when they send them to Donko Krum Hospital, they don't even have the, the, the medicine to treat them. A teacher died in 2019 because of this, two teachers have died because of this snake bite on the islands. And three of them too was, was cured and later was transferred. The parents came that no, they will not allow their children to also stay in a front place. So quickly they took them from this place. In all, there are 79 kindergarten, 80 primary, 30 junior high schools in the Afran Plain North District. On the Dwarf Island without electricity, telecommunication and other basic necessities, specifically only 22 kindergarten and primary schools exist. Most of them just in name. Some of the places, they have cut some small, small sticks to cover the place with a touch and the people are staying there. Some of the places, the furniture are not there. Now because they don't have proper infrastructure, even the TLM that even NGOs and other people brought, bring to us, can never be found because the people don't have offices. But compounding the problem here is the issue of snake bites. Basic school coordinators for the Afran Plain North District paint a grim picture of the situation. Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Anthony Boatin, admits these are real challenges that need a multi stakeholder approach to deal with. These are issues that must be tackled holistically and across uh, agencies, across sectors. And I can assure you, something is being done. 
For example, as I speak to you, there is a committee that is working on identification of what we call deprived schools so that some motivation can go to teachers who are self-posting to these areas. We expect the committee to finish its work and present this report in the coming weeks. Of course, we are also aware of effort by government to provide housing for teachers. So it is our prayer and hope that all these initiatives will materialize. The education service is currently posting new trained teachers to the various areas when teacher vacancies have been declared nationwide. Oh, oh wow, wow. That was a very heartbreaking video. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think it's very heartbreaking because um, students go to school and they don't have chairs and tables to sit on and it's very sad. And Not only do I think that this is sad, but it actually makes me grateful for the school I have because like, we have chairs, we have tables, and we don't have to sit in the dirt. I was thinking, what if something happens there? Like, so animals can easily enter yeah. any classroom as well. The structure of the building is so bad because you don't know where um, an animal can come from anywhere and just enter the class. And at the second point says, um, a teacher suffered from snake bites. And it's very scary because you can't be in a class then a uh, snake just comes from nowhere into the class and just bites you. It's so, so scary. And the thing is, you'll never know what type of snake that might decide to come in because some snakes, they can be completely harmless. The other snakes, they can be venomous and you don't know like how many hours you have because depending on how old you are and how venomous that thing is, you can die from that. And if I ever had to see a teacher get bitten by a snake in front of my very own eyes, I'd probably be scared of snakes for the rest of my life, not even when I see them on TV. Yeah. You can see that the classroom is built in a bushy area, and so maybe not only a snake can come, and maybe different wild animals, and I think we should, the government should do something about it. I'm sure that many people would agree with you, but now, we go on to a technology and education segment, or the t and &E segment. I hope you are having fun because I surely am. And let's move straight to our t and &E segment. And on the segment, we are going to be learning something about robotics. And to help us do that is Lady Joy, a co-op from Mingo Blogs. Let's welcome her. Welcome, Lady Joy. Hello. Please, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. So why robotics? Okay, so once my father came back home, he told me that there's this company called Mingo Blogs and they, they work with robots and they also code. So I was getting some interest, so I told my father that, okay, so I would love to join this program. So he signed up for me, and I was able to join the program. So what do we have here? Take us through it. Okay, so this over here is a new model, or should I say a new robot called Mingo. Well, it's a robot which can, you know, help people, like blind people, to avoid obstacles and lots more. Please take us through your demonstration. Sure. This robot has been disassembled. So I would have to assemble them. And is it difficult to assemble robots? No, not really. Once you have the idea of what you're doing, it's going to be pretty easy. Okay, so here we have the track ties. And there are two. There are 
two wheels. And then this is my screwdriver. And then this is a remote, which I'm not really going to use. Okay, so like, what are you building on? What are you working on? I'm actually going to work on this robot and I'm going to assemble it. It's been disassembled to many other pieces. So I have to put them together. But it looks like a car. <laughs> It's been made that way because, you see, it's made for fun and it's actually, you know, used to entertain children. So what I have here is the body of the robot, which is right here. So um, these are some type of screws which are going to hold the robots. Okay, so I'm going to put them through. because it's like they think this world is kind of like a men's world so what are your ideas about that actually if we could actually you see we all have problems and I think if we involve robots into doing some of these or solving some of these problems we could actually be free Okay, so as you said earlier on, your father introduced you to Mingo Blocks, right? Yes. And so, do you come from a family where peop uh, people do robots? Or? You know, actually I don't. That's what makes it more interesting. My family don't work with robots. They don't do anything about robots. And... You know, I can actually, if I set my mind to this, I can actually do more. And I bet I could help them, even with... So are these like eyes for the robots? Yeah, they are sensors. Okay. And what do they do? They sense like moving obstacles, lights, and all those stuff. So we are going for a quick commercial break. By the time we back, Lady Joy will be done with the Mingo robot. Stay tuned. Hi kiddos! Let's learn how to write the letter B. Pull down. Go to the top, around and in. Back to the middle and around again. B is for... B. B. Remember to keep being nice to each other. We will be right back. 
Keep smiling. Welcome back. Welcome back and we are done with the Mingo robots and this is the end product. So Lady Joy, after you've done coding, um, what's next? I'm going to demonstrate or give the robot a task to do, okay. which is avoiding obstacles. Wow, this is amazing. I coded it to move forward for one second, move backwards for one second, turn left for one second, and turn right for one second. Oh, Lady Joy, before we go, what is this light for? Well, this light, it's going to demonstrate that this robot can also control light bulbs, any AC object or electron something. Okay. So I'm going to this this I'm going to connect this to the host tables. So I'm going to use the robots to you know control the AC objects. And I'm going to use this app to control it, to okay. turn on the light bulb and to turn it off. Wow, this is so, so nice. Wow. Would you like to try it? Okay, so uh, off. Okay, so thank you, Lady Joy, for your time. And this is so amazing. And children watching you, very proud of you so what are your advice for them my advice is that whatever you would like to do in life you should focus on it and even do more than that you may not know what's going to happen in the future or what you're going to be in the future it's all God's plan and yes. I'm telling you that if you really want to do something in life I think you should focus on that. That's my advice to them. Okay, so we are done with the T and E segment. Let's go to Anelam for Kids Trend. Thank you, Aurelia. That was an impressive demonstration. Now we go on to the Kids Trends. On the Kids Trend segment today, our cameras caught up with the students of the Association International School for their annual Easter concert event. Without further ado, Let's look at their highlights. Nura and I'm in MYP1B Niger. Um, I'm in the dance group Dance Mania and we had a lot of fun because we had the chance to show everybody what we've been practicing and our parents got to see the effort we put into our work. So my name is Tamine Amoni Amki and I'm in PYP5 as a year uh, and my role in the Easter concert which I love, the Easter concert I mean, was the MC or like yeah also, a Talented Kids Season 13 finale took place. So here are some of the highlights. With a smile. Yamido! He is going to do that. 
the presentation for us. Congratulations to all the winners. We are proud of you. Now, we go to the DIY segment with Samara. Thank you, Nelan, for the kiss chance today. We now have a young chef with us. Can you please tell us your name? Adam Ekobe Dukwege. Can you please tell us a bit about yourself? Okay, when I was born, I was born without a tibia bone. And at the age of five, I had to get my right leg below knee amputation. The following year, my mom and my dad were in a tragic accident that resulted in the loss of my mother's life. And since then, my dad had to step up and be like, don't that cooks for us. And he's the one that actually inspired me to start cooking. So by the age of, I think I was nine, I went to the baby chef competition and I came in in second place. Uh, following a few months later, I went to the West African um, Chefs Conference and I've continued my journey since then and continued my passion. Wow, you're very inspirational to me. So what are we going to be cooking today? Um, so today we're going to be cooking a Caesar salad. Okay, so what, do we, what ingredients do we need for it? So we need... Um, Roman lettuce or any other lettuce, mayonnaise, um, anchovy fillets, um, cheese, um, parsley, vinegar, lemon juice, mustard, olive oil, garlic powder, white pepper, and black pepper. For the toppings, we have um, chicken breast, crispy chicken breast with um, dried bread. Okay. So, how do we start off? Like, what do we use to start off? So first, you have to start with making your, your sauce. You start by mixing your anchovies with the garlic. When you're done doing that, you add your mayonnaise and your mustard. When the, you've done combining the mayonnaise and mustard, you add your lemon juice and your vinegar. After that, you add your olive oil and your seasonings. Then you mix the sauce with the lettuce and then you dish out your chicken breast and your dried bread. Okay, so can we go ahead? Sure. Let's say that mm -hmm. you wanted to mix like a like a child wanted to mix like a lot of different vegetables. Is that possible? Sure. This is just like this because um, the it's more lettuce than any other substance in here. So already it's kind of healthy. But sure, if you want to add your own veggies, you can go ahead. Okay. So now. We can give it a sprinkle of the cheese and the parsley. So what cheese, what type of cheese is that? This is Parmesan. You sprinkle just a tad of parsley on there.
So, so we're getting cat food. Mm -hmm. Sure. Our salad is done. This looks very tasty. And I can't wait to try it. So how do I taste this? So if you really want to taste everything, you should add a bit of everything onto the spoon. This is lovely. I love it. Thank you so much, Adam, for making this. You're welcome. Adam, where can we find you? Oh, on Instagram. Okay. So, what's your name on Instagram? The Silver Whisk GH. Okay. Thank you, Adam, for teaching us how to make a good salad You're and welcome. for coming here. Thank you. Now we have learned a thing or two, let's cross over to the kids' court with Aurelia. On the kids' cast today, I am going to be asking random children about how they feel being compared to other people. Join me, let's check their opinions. Sometimes it discourages me from whom I want to be. And please, is it academically? Yeah. Okay, I hope no one compares you to anyone again. Yes, thank you. I feel bad. Please, why? Because I want to be my own self, but they are comparing me to someone else. Okay, so who, you, who do you want to be? My own self. Okay. It kills my con confidence. I wouldn't want to be compared because I just want to be myself. Okay. I'm trying my best. So if they compare me to someone and I'm not the person, I'm not that person, so that's what it will make me feel bad. Welcome back from that break and before the break you saw me speaking to random children about how they feel being compared to others and every week I will be speaking to random children about things they don't like to be done to them. So Anela, what's next? Coming up next, we're going to be linking with our international correspondent Robert. Robert, what do you have for us now? Hello, my name is Robert Addy and I'm an international correspondent for Kids Arena. Today, I had an interview with rugby coach Carl Hardwick Lawson. He stressed on how the children should stay fit and healthy through doing sports. Let's go check it out. I think sports is hugely important towards children's health. Um, I think it helps find the balance between the right amount of physical exercise I think it supports with mental health and I also think it helps aid good nutrition because if you're doing lots of exercise and you're running around I think in turn it makes you want to eat more healthily uh, so you're fueled correctly for the, to play sport. Yeah. Why rugby and not football? Ah, see it's a long story, it goes back many many years, probably back into the late 80s um, but it was at school, um, oh. I was in first school, I was probably about six years of age and I was getting into trouble with my with my teachers at school. Um, I was a little bit aggressive, I was a little <laughs> bit boisterous in the playground. Um, and my teacher pulled my parents in and said, look, Carl needs to calm down a little bit. Why don't you take him down to the local rugby club to play rugby? And probably as from you this year, I love the contact, I love the physical <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And it helped me really, really calm down. Um, and like I said, that was probably back in 1989, 1990. And I've been doing it ever since. Absolutely love it. It's changed my life. Um, and I'm really happy. I love it. 
And how long has he played rugby? Oh, so I retired at 31, so oh. 25 years of playing, and this is my fifth year of coaching children uh, since when my child Duncan got involved. Uh -huh. um, so I've been involved in, sport, in, in rugby for as long as I can remember. Um, yeah, and it's brilliant. And do you get to use anything you use in rugby in your daily life? All the time. Um, so the biggest thing for me in life is the fact that when you're at work or you're at school, you always have to be part of a team, okay? And it's the same as out on the field, okay? We have different pressures out on the field where you might be under pressure and you have to work together as a team to solve the problem. And it's the same in the classroom and it's the same for me at work now. It also helps me at home with my family. It helps me respect other people's opinions. Um, it helps me work with other people that I don't necessarily know. Um, and also with sport, you don't necessarily always get on with your teammates all the time. However, you respect your teammates at all the time. And it's the same in working life now. So there's skills that are transparent, um, not transparent, sorry, that transpire across from your sports to, into your into your working and home life. Thank you for being, us, being with us for today. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy coaching everyone else. It's been a pleasure, Robbie. Well done. Yep. And we'll see you soon. See Take you care. Soon. Hope you picked a thing or two to keep you fit and healthy. See you again next time. My name is Robert Addy and enjoy your weekend. Remember to keep being nice to each other. We will be right back. To the final segment of the day, which is the star of the week. He is known as Aquadanyami, the winner for season 12 selling tickets. With a round of applause, let's welcome him. <laughs> How are you feeling? Feeling good. I'm doing so right. Okay, so how is life after um, you being the winner for season 12 Talenta Kids? Mm. Um, after Talenta Kids, it's good. When I go out, according to me, according to me, I'm enjoying and I thank God that now I have a lot of international connections. Some people do shopping for me outside Ghana. Some people also give me one to go and cheer me. Wow. In fact, I'm enjoying my film. Wow. <laughs> Have you performed at some shows? Yes, please. But my father has been so selective because he realized my academics wasn't good, especially with my fluency. How do you combine school and music? It is not easy. It is not easy at all. I need to learn a song at the same time. I need to do my homework. It is not easy, but I'm trying my best. Yeah. Okay. So do you get um, support from your parents? Of course I do. I get support from my parents. They are even building a studio for me. And my wow. father loves music. Everywhere he is, a big shout out to him. I love him very much. What is your most memorable time? Hmm. Hmm. My most memorable time, that was the day that they, should, they said we should sing coronavirus song on Talented Case. And I went to choose a wrong song. So that night, my father wrote a song for me. So I need to learn that song within that night. So I only slept two hours. Wow. Yeah, I only slept two hours. But do you know something? My performance was the best. Yeah, yes. So that means that when you put in a lot of work into you, what you want to do, you end up being great. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any advice for young talents like you? Oh, I want to advise them that they should never give up. And everything that they do, they should put God first. Okay, so can you sing um, a line of the song you sang for you to be the winner for Talented Kids? Oh, I sang two songs. That was Obra and Mam Jumani. So which one do you want to sing? Yeah. Obra, Obra, Obra. And you are out. Be right, be right, oh, be right. And you are out. I'll be right, 
Oni pa mi wa bi rai. Ye boni se. Akukwa jisha bebi atu onu wo. Jisa onu ara o. Ah, onu ara o. Ah, obi rai. Eni wa ara o. Mi ya bo fro onu ai. Ye to ma mi di e no. Now me who pray me say, my opinion. Thank you very much. And the next one, we thank everyone who's been on the show here today, and we hope that everybody watching will tune in next week same time. We hope that you have a you had a wonderful time with us. Yes, it's bye for now. So akwadanya me, the stage is yours. Come do your thing. Okay. Oh, don't you say I know them? Oh, in your eye, I love me every day. Oh, don't you say I know them? You say I'm in my need in frame, oh. I wanna be one in the ghetto. Oh, don't you say I know them? Oh, this I, this I, this I, my dream. Me sorry, I'm not far from my dream, yo. We could dance to our dream, dream, dream. When you bend your arm into me, then I feel you move so I'm into me, gotta be ready to say I'm not for me. Me better just say me better hook up, me better hook up.